What's up? I have an iPad Mini 5 here. Probably the first 5 that I've seen. Um, and as you can see in the ammeter, it's charging at a full amp. However, so, however, um, as you can see, it is does not have the charging symbol. Alright, um, and it's plugged in, everything. Uh, it just does not have the charging symbol, but it's it's charging, and I guess it's considered stuck at one percent. And where else have we seen that before? Well, let's take a closer look. So this is the logic board right next to the battery connector on this iPad Mini Five. Like maybe the head is a little bit turned or something, so I can straighten this up a little bit so that I can get a better view, a little bit more clear. Okay, so. Oh, all right, so this is the battery. This is the battery for the iPad Mini 5. Um, and then you notice that there's some components missing down here. Let's drill down a little bit closer. So components here, components here, um, and obviously this is missing right here. Um, so the question is, what is this component? And if we go to ZXW Tools, there are no schematics for these things. Um, and if you look at the iPad Mini 4, um, it doesn't really have anything that I compared to to another iPad Mini 4 logic board, and I don't really see any component that kind of looks like this, you know. Um, but we do know that in the iPhone 7, what is it? iPhone 8, sorry. Let me see if we can get an 8 here somewhere. All right, let me get an 8 logic board, and then we'll kind of go from there. Let's see, 8 plus, okay. So, we have an iPhone 8 plus logic board here, and we can see that one of the, one of the common problems with uh, the 8 and above is this transistor right here. Um, there's two transistors, two diodes, and usually a resistor and a capacitor on each line. And what do they do? Well, they're connected to the battery connector, and they are I2C lines, which are basically data lines that lead from the battery to the CPU which I believe Apple implemented um, starting from the 8 and onwards uh, because they were having battery percentage issues and do you remember the whole scandal where they were like throttling performance well they added these I2C lines so that they can accurately monitor the battery a little bit more uh, better I guess yeah um, so, they, so that they can get better data on it um, before the 8 um, and newer devices, they were just using something called a switch line, and I, I guess that the switch line wasn't as um, useful as these I2C lines. So, here's the thing. Um, when we look at this iPad Mini 5 here, uh, we can see that, and it's taking me a little while to figure this out actually, but you can see that there's a little square looking thing here, and then you have a... Um, you have a resistor here and a capacitor here, and there's supposed to be something that looks like it's some, supposed to be something identical on this side. Capacitor, resistor, and probably a transistor here, and which which totally makes sense because the transistor will cause the you know the charging issue and the battery percentage to be to be stuck at one percent. So considering that seeing that we do not have schematics for these things and donor boards aren't um, readily available, what I'm going to try to do is. I'm going to try to take um, an 8, even though it's going to be a lot smaller, but I'm going to try to take an 8. Hopefully hopefully it doesn't damage anything, but I'm going to try. Unless, well, I don't think I'm going to be able to find this transistor anywhere else is the, is the problem. Otherwise, I'd just take it from somewhere else. But I don't know. I guess we can maybe just take a look uh, very quickly to see if we can find it somewhere. Well, I have an iPad Pro here. So maybe, you know what, maybe they do have it on the Pro. I'm not really sure. Okay, let's just let's just take a quick gander. This is an iPad Pro 12.9 uh, donor board here. And let's see, where's the battery? Um, actually, probably better on the 10.5. But here's the battery. Well, do we see any square looking transistor? And we might be able to steal from here. Well, maybe that. Those aren't transistors. Maybe that one. 
Um, let's just take a quick look again. Let's see what this looks like. See so if there's any markings on it. Um, uh, I don't really. See, I don't know what that says actually. Anyways, I don't really know what that says, um, and I don't. I think maybe the 10.5 has one, but let's take a look. Now, here's a 10.5 here, and I know that the 10.5 ha has has a little something. Is it 10.5? No, it's not the 10.5. Oh, is it? No, it's not 10.5. Oh, hold on. Yeah, it is 10.5. Okay, so the 10.5 transistor is actually that's what we're looking for right there. <laughs> okay. So I guess we can just take it from the donor. This is an iCloud Lock 10.5 here, which I don't know if I'll use again. Um, you know what? Let's do this. Let's go to. Uh, let's see, is there a 10.5 here? No. Well, let's try this one. Oh, bastard! All right, I gotta reopen. Come on. I'm sure we can find these on uh, Digikey. I just don't know how to do it. It's a problem. Um, so I think maybe I'll just take that. I don't, I'm not really sure what else to do here. Yeah, I'm not really sure what else to do. Uh, I guess I can maybe let's see. Well, that one I know will work. Uh, so I don't know what else to do aside from just taking that one. I mean, I, I was my plan was to actually use the iPhone 8 transistor, but I know that that's probably not going to be to the same specs. Whereas this one looks exactly like a match. So, anyways, let's look at this iPhone 11. Maybe, maybe we'll get something off that. I don't really know, to be honest with you. Let's see, iPhone. Let's see, iPad Pro 11 inch. What the hell? What's going on here, man? Six. All right. Well, it's not working anymore. So, uh, yeah, let's just take this. Um. Although I really want to see if the 8 works because at some point we're going to run out of this. So let's just try the 8. Let's just do it. Let's go with the original plan here. Let's see if it works. Um, okay, so let's get my transistors out. Man, this is this is probably gonna be really really small compared to the one that we're supposed to use. But this will be a good test. Okay, so let's just see what it looks like first. Size wise, at least. <laughs> okay, so that's not too bad. Yeah, that's not too bad. So the question is can we? Uh, I guess we can just probably flip it upwards, really. Uh, well, I don't know. So, what do we do here? Hmm. Well, this is supposed to be over here, this is supposed to be over here, this is supposed to be there. So I guess we can just run jumpers maybe or something. I'm not really sure what to do. Um, let's see, or maybe we can just kind of go like like this and then run this around or something like that. Yeah, let's try that. Hey Google, turn smoke on. Let me just get things situated here. 
Right, so let's just tin these real quick first because I'm going to run little jumpers. Okay, so I think what we'll do is, yeah, we'll just go slow on this. I'm sure it'll work. I <laughs> just hopefully I don't have to reopen this thing or something like that later because that'll that, I hate doing that. Alright, that's number one. I don't know if you guys can even see this. Let me see if I can zoom in. Maybe I'll give you, let you guys see this a little better. Probably should have cut this before. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I probably could use heat, but probably, probably better if I don't. You know, unless I need to. So this is this is working though. I'll just put some green stuff on it afterwards, and then that'll kind of tack it in place. And these are shielded, but I'm I'm gonna kind of run it around it. You know what? This is all connected here, so I'll just do it here. You know what? I should have I probably should have put it in between here. That actually would have been a good idea, right? Is that right? So this, actually, this, uh, this, yeah, this goes there. This goes there. Okay. All right, that's fine. That's fine. And then we will just run this mother over here, and then we will green stuff it, clean it up, green stuff it. Everybody is. Dumb, fat, and happy. Okay. Looks pretty good. Alright, that wasn't too bad. I mean, even though the wires are kind of sticking up. Just gotta be careful. Alright, so let's... Um, clean it up some IPA real quick. Gently. Well, I don't even know if this is gonna work right now, so let's let's give it a go first. How about that? And then and then we'll green stuff it. And then we'll green stuff it. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Looks like it'll work, but let's test it first. All right. I hope it doesn't blow up on me. Well, now we're getting the charging symbol. You can see that or not. So you get the charging sign. Uh, and then you can see that it's charging at 1 amp. Um, there you go. So we'll just wait for this charge up and I'll start start up the video again and see what happens. But I think that's a good sign that we're getting the battery charging sign. Alright, so as you can see, we are um let's see. Uh, let's just get that going. It says one percent now, and I'll show you what the what it says on the ammeter. And we are charging at a full two point six amps, which is normal for any device that is probably a eight and higher. Any device from around that time frame and uh, newer so uh, yeah so it works so I'm just gonna 
I guess I'll finish this repair. I'll put the green stuff off on and then uh and then I'll end it there. Alright. So in case you were wondering, this is uh well I don't know what I was gonna say, but I guess we can call this iPhone iPad Mini 5 Pride Image Repair. Uh and it works with the iPhone 8 transistor. How long it'll work, I don't know. <laughs> but I don't think we have too many options here. Unless we know where to source these uh the part, you know. Uh so I mean these we know where to source. Uh we don't know we can get a donor part, but it's not gonna be easily available. Um you'd probably have to buy a ten oh, I'm sorry, a ten point what is it, a ten ten point five inch iPad uh donor board or you would have to find a mini five donor board which you know not readily readily available now. So anyways. So I think, yeah, I'll just do this and just kind of really just douse it in green stuff and then harden it with my UV light. And that should secure it into place. Okay. So green stuff. <clears throat> we'll let it sit for a little bit. Okay, that should be good. Um, you can kind of poke at it if you want. Uh, it's not actually great. So let's just bust this mother. More UV light. I'll just leave it on here for a little bit. Alright, so I'm just going to end the repair right here. Uh, thanks for watching. I just wanted to say thank you for watching our videos on YouTube. Um, you know, when I started micro soldering about three or four years ago, probably about three years ago, um, I started because I ended up breaking someone's phone during a repair. Yeah, this was back in the days of the iPhone 5C, and as I was disconnecting the battery, I accidentally pried off one of the little components next to the battery connector. So my options were to try to try to fix it or to buy buy the customer a new phone, and and that's kind of what started this journey. Well, fast forward three years later, um, we have a website now, microsoldering.com, and we also have an online training course. Um, it's ninety nine ninety nine if you buy it through our website, and we go over just about everything that you need to know to get started on your microsoldering journey. Um, it's uh, kind of sectioned out into about four parts. And uh, the first part, we just kind of go over all of the basics and tools, how to use diode mode, um, and uh, what kind of tools and equipment to buy and stuff like that. The second part, we talk a little bit about ZXW tools. And in the third part, we go over four of the most common repairs. Let's update this. It should be four common repairs. So it's basically no touch, no backlight no power and we just added a section for audio IC on the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus and then the last part is data recovery no boot and just kind of a very basic um, uh, discussion about data recovery so if you want to buy it just go to microsoldering.com click on store shop and then you'll come to this um, this uh, page right here just click on buy at Udemy and that'll take you to Udemy where our course is hosted. Um, and you can even preview some videos of the course and see if you like it or not. And right now it's we're at four and a half hours and we're adding to it um, as much as we can. So uh, just make sure you go through our website. Otherwise, the cost is a little bit higher. All right. Thanks for watching.